Amish. Once they're done using their workhorses, they end up looking like this and then wow. sent to slaughter to the meat buyers. Yeah, they've actually gained a little bit of weight since being here, but they have a few hundred pounds to go. Um, I'm Melissa Borden, I'm 46. We are at the Devoted Barn. I started the Devoted Barn about seven years ago as a place to bring animals from extreme cruelty and neglect and partner them with at-risk kids or adults that have made bad choices um, to give the animals a platform to teach compassion and empathy in the hopes that someday we won't have to deal with all these extreme uh, cruelty and neglect cases. Up from the Amish, they ended up in a feedlot in Pennsylvania. The Devoted Friends Animal Society is our nonprofit and we just celebrated our 10th year. We opened the barn seven years ago. Well, we're gonna go see the moms and babies. Come here, Mary. So this is Mary and her baby, Freedom. These guys we actually got in a partnership with um, of Down River for Veterans. So they are starting our program of working with uh, veterans. So this is Paisley and Preston. It's okay, Paisley. So, yeah, so she's terrified of people. She came out of a kill pen that was, has been known for being pretty abusive to the animals while they're there. So our biggest need is always people. So if you think about the animals that we bring in, they're all fearful of people. So to get them to a point where they can be up for adoption, they need to be good with everybody. They need to have lots of friends. So in order to do that, we need lots of different people interacting with them every day. So volunteers is a huge, huge part of what makes our animals successful. We start around seven and that we start with morning chores. Everybody has to get fed. Every kennel stall has to get cleaned. Um, dogs have to go for walks. We have to have time to socialize them. And then everything has to happen again at night. So it's, it's definitely a lot of work. It's uh, full days, but as much work as it is, it's extremely rewarding. Oh, there's a turkey. That's Alex. We have roughly 140 animals here, a combination of horses, cows, sheep, goats, llamas, alpacas, uh, pigs, which you'll hear, uh, dogs, cats. Um, we have some bunnies too. Um, so they obviously go through a lot of food. Our feed bills are very high. We spend roughly about 1300 a week on feed. Um, we go through a little over $1,000 a week in hay. Um, fortunately, dog food, uh, we haven't had to purchase ourselves. We have amazing uh, volunteers and donors who, have, uh, who supply the dog food and buy off our Amazon wish list when we put out a call for it. Um, but everything else we do have to buy. So the grain and the hay for, uh, for all the sheep, the goats, the cows, uh, horses, things like that. What? What are you guys doing? Hi, babies. Our animals come to us from only extreme cruelty and neglect or completely feral and only from law enforcement. So when they come to us, they're terrified of people. So it's a process to get them over that, to get them trusting and, and wanting human attention. Once, I mean, our goal for every animal here is to eventually get them to a point where they can be adopted and, and placed in their own home. Some of our animals don't make it there, and so we have to have that forever home for them here, which is why we bought this property. One of the biggest reasons that we wanted to move and that we outgrew our last farm was the last farm was we had one facility with one barn. Everybody was together. There was no room to expand there. This property gave us the opportunity to give every type of animal their own space. So we have sheep and goats in one area, pigs in one area, horses in another, cows in another, and then our dogs are completely separate in their own dog room. Just this property alone, moving to this property, our expenses went up, our insurance went up. The, you know, the things that most people don't think about, the electricity, the insurance, the garbage removal. Um, all of those went up when we bought this property. So obviously that's a huge ongoing need. It's easy to volunteer. You just come to one of our orientations. We have it all on our website. You just fill out the online questionnaire and they set, they schedule you for um, orientation. Donations, we try and make it as simple as possible. We have PayPal, um, Venmo, Stripe. We've got all different kinds of ways to donate. You can always mail, mail in donations as well or drop them off. We have a lot of dogs that have been survivors of the torture camps. Um, in the dog meat trade. And I just think there's a lot of misconceptions that these dogs might not be 
able to be good family pets um, and it, it's definitely not true you know and that's the one thing that I would love everyone to come here and to to see these dogs and to see even these horses you know like people ask why would you rescue a 20 year old percher on that skin and bones you know why you know that was headed for slaughter because to me every animal deserves that chance every animal deserves to have that final place where they can just be at peace and and have that happy um, calm quiet life you know especially yeah. after they've been treated so unkindly for so many years and and you know in our feral dogs you know we're not the normal rescue where we get a dog in and they're up for adoption in 30 days or, or two weeks some of them you know our dogs will take years you know they will take years to be become adoptable and that's where I think a lot of people might not understand why we do it why we take that time but once you see them and you meet them and and you you see that dog come in and eventually like run around your house and become a normal dog like it's worth it they're they're all worth it